So today is um, somewhat of a uh, public service announcement kind of thing. Uh, it's fixing MacBooks. Um, what I have here is a A1706. Uh, so it's a 2016, 2016 or 2017, I think 2018 as well, uh, MacBook Pro. This is the one with the touch bar. And um, there's a problem in our industry that, that we're seeing now, right now, that uh, screens are very scarce. Screens are extremely expensive um, for anybody, for, for us to get them with, with, with our um, connections and anybody. Screens are getting very difficult to get. So it, 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 uh, it kind of makes sense for a lot of people to change their own screen. Not a problem. You're, you're handy with a, a screwdriver. Changing your own screen is not that hard to do. It's tedious. It's a pain in the ass. You need a bunch of, um, a bunch of screwdrivers, as, uh, as we talked about with other laptops and everything, that you need, let's see, to, to open it, you need the Pentalobe um, 4. Then to get the screen out, you need a Pentalobe 1 for these, which is the same size as an iPhone uh, back. Then you need a T, T4 and a T5, and then T4 over here too. So it's tedious, pain in the ass, got to be really careful. Always disconnect the battery. It's the first thing you have to do whenever you open up a machine, always disconnect the battery. Um, you don't really have to take the, um, the screw out of the battery here that, that holds down this little flappy do. Uh, just disconnecting this turns off the MOSFETs here, so if it's a properly functioning battery, all you have to do is disconnect this wire, the, this little flex wire, and that disconnects the, the MOSFETs in here and effectively disconnects the battery from the machine. But that, that's not what we're really on about, because I think that's covered. Um, th this, this is an issue. This, this happened uh, three times so far. Um, do the minions deserve dead fishes? Yeah. Uh -huh. Possibly. I mean, it, everybody's out there, and it's been a really killer week. Everybody's been really busy. So may, maybe either fishes or uh, donuts for everybody, because every, everybody does need a break after this week. This week has been murder. Um, but yeah, back to this. So changing your screen um, is, is something that just about anybody that, that's handy with this type of stuff can do. If you're changing the whole screen assembly, changing the cell is... That's a total nightmare. But changing the screen assembly is not that bad to do. And screens are ridiculously short supply and they're amazingly expensive right now. We can't offer screens, screen replacements for a lot of these MacBooks at decent prices that make it financially sensible to change screens. So it makes sense to buy a screen and change it yourself. Now, we've seen this three times that um, somebody has bought the screen and they're... Um, they follow the iFixit guide. iFixit usually has really good guides on all of this stuff. So they, they tell you, open up the machine, disconnect the battery. Um, then we start disconnecting everything here. Let me get this cover off. This, this is the, underneath these little plastic covers, these are the hinges right here. So this, this, is, this is the area that we're concerned about right now. I, I think, uh, I, don't, I didn't read the iFixit guide. I meant to do the iFixit guide before I made this video, but just been way too busy. Um, I think this is something that needs to be mentioned in the iFixit guide. So, let me zoom in here. So this is the hinge. You got three T8, oh yeah, that's another um, screwdriver you need, it's T8. So, three T8 uh, screws, and you can see that the hinge is this pointy arrow bit here. And it, it do I have a T8 here? Mm, yes I do. So you take this screw out here. You see the, the hinge goes right there. It's right there next to this connector, next to the board. So three times so far we've seen that um, when you have to take this, uh, this hinge out, the screen out, it's hidden a little bit underneath the metal here. The, the, this metal is a little bit of a lip that's going over it and it's hidden underneath here. So you have to push the whole screen and the hinge that way a little bit to get it out. But if you do that right here with the, this pointy point pointing right here, you wind up crushing this connector. And that's what happened on this machine. That's what happened to two other customers too. And th it, this goes from being a money-saving thing of changing your own screen to now you have to uh, 
fix the motherboard, fix your, um, your touch strip, or replace your touch strip. So if I pull this off here, I can show you what happened. So what, what happens is um, it, when, when you lever out the screen, if you don't pull the hinge up enough to get it out of the way of everything, this hinge should be sticking up at like a 45 degree angle. You should have the MacBook open and, and you have to make sure that it clears all of this and it doesn't push on this connector because this connector gets broken. And this is a lucky guy. So um, his connector got broken it shorted everything out, shut down the machine. The machine will not turn on anymore, but he did not destroy the touch bar. He did not destroy anything on the logic board. He, he only destroyed this connector here. So this is ridiculously hard to change because it's on a flex, but we're going to change it now. And uh, other, other um, people that had this problem, they had to get a whole entire new touch bar because the touch bar got shorted out. What happens is that this connector is, is um, all the pins are lined up like this and connecting. And when you push one side up, all of a sudden all the pins are like this. They're all interconnected. And the entire connector shorts itself out all the way up and down both sides. So let me show you this under the microscope where you can actually see it. Microscope. So we see here, we broke out one of the bottom pieces of the connector when it pushed up too far. So now we're gonna take this connector off of here and then I have another one that is on a piece of um, a ripped, off bore, a ripped off connector from a touch bar that we changed out because the touch bar was broken. So I have not found, found these connectors to buy yet. I, they gotta exist somewhere. They're probably reused something in somewhere, but I haven't seen them. But we're gonna reclaim that and we're gonna fix this. So first things first, let's get this connector off of here. So since it's, um, I'm gonna turn on the fume extractor so there's gonna be some noise. Since it's on a flex cable, I don't wanna use um, hot air to take it off because the flex doesn't like being that hot so what I'm going to do is just mash this all up with a bigger soldering iron and just rip it right off like that but again you still have to be careful that this is on a flex connector because this flex connector goes straight to the touch bar there's, there's no saving the touch bar if you ruin this flex connector so I'm just going to get some flux on it just pull the pins off couple at a time. Just ruin the connector, make sure everything's melted before you put any pressure on it. There you go. One side, now we'll do the other side. Just get some heat on it, make sure it's melted, and then you can pry the connectors right off the flex. I'm at a bad angle for this. There you go. That should be free. I'll take another pair of tweezers, pull that off of there. It's not free. Okay, I have one that's still connected right there. Make sure you don't ever put that much pressure on this because you can rip one of these pads off of here so easy. So if something's fighting you, see why it's fighting you. Don't just fight through it. Okay. Got that off, we'll clean this up a little bit. I really should, if for doing a connector like this, you really should wick it too. Maybe I'll try to very lightly a little bit. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is uh, something that I don't usually do. I'm gonna cut a piece of wick off I want it to be as uh, hot as it can be without scrubbing or really getting in there. I just want it to suck up the solder and that's it. So this, this is kind of difficult because I kind of need three hands for this. Let's try. I'm going to get the heat on that and then there. Okay. Nice and light. Barely putting any pressure and there you go. Now all the pads are nice and flat.
Got to replace one of these displays tomorrow. Good luck. It's not, it's not that difficult. Just uh, be aware of where these hinges are and where, where things are pointing, where things are, uh, are pressing on. Be careful with the Wi-Fi wires, too, pulling them out. I mean, follow the iFixit guide. The iFixit guide should be perfect. But I think this is a note that needs to be put in there. I need to read it and see if anything is in there. So now let's uh, reclaim our, our replacement. Get the whole machine out of the way. Okay, so this, I'm going to hot air off of this. So I gotta be really careful with it. Hold down the flex. Heat it up. Just make sure it doesn't go flying on me. The, it's going out of focus because the rubber that is underneath here is bowing up. I should have put a mat down, an aluminum piece down or something, but... Nice and light. There you go, it's just starting to melt. Now I should be able to... Come on, get off of there. There we go. Almost. Come on, there you go. Again, you need three three arms to do this. Somehow I did it with two. So there's our connector. There's our other connector. Side by side comparison. I'd be more inclined to buy Apple products if they weren't so difficult to repair. Eh. Yes and no. Uh, the, the whole difficulty to repair, like, I have a Dell. Um, my girlfriend has a Dell. Um, hi, hi over here. I've seen him with his, uh, his Lenovo. I've tried opening my Dell. I want to open my Dell. I want to change the thermal paste. It is not as easy as opening a Mac. Opening a Mac it, it is... Any one of them is actually really easy to get the thing open and get the logic board out. It's so much easier than a lot of other machines. I mean, there's, there's plenty of other machines that are easier than Macs. The, the problem with Mac is the, their whole exclusivity stuff and wanting to have exclusive chips and exclusive deals and, you know, you can't, you can't have this and all that. that that's, that's the problem. It's just scarcity of parts. As far as working on them, I, I think they're pretty easy to work on. But that could just be my experience talking. It's, you know, like we, we had some guy that, um, that watched me do one of the mucks and uh, screen connectors. And he, he, it empowered him to do it himself. Well, all, all the better. I thank, thank you for, for trying. But he figured out very quickly he got in over his head and he couldn't get the mucks off easily. So he wound up sending it to us to, to finish up the job. Which is great. I'm, I'm, glad, you, uh, I'm glad you gave it a try. I didn't see it. I'm just hoping that you didn't uh, mess up anything more than what it would have been if you just sent it to us to begin with. But, man, th thanks for trying. Thanks for keeping it going. Oh, this is going to be a pain in the ass. What am I doing? I need to put down some flux and then it'll actually stay. I zoom out too. It probably is a, some proprietary crap in Dell, too. I've, I've never worked on a Dell, so... All I would really like to do is change my thermal paste, but I've had this Dell 7577 for years now, and the thing still runs spectacular. I haven't had any major problems at all, knock on wood. Had Windows software errors and stuff like that, but I have a backup solution that recovers easily. Okay, so now this is a real pain in the ass. We have it in position. I have it lined up pretty damn well there. 
So now we're going to just tap it, get, get it to tack in place with a soldering iron full of, oh my god, that's absolutely disgusting. Okay, a soldering iron with better, better solder than that on it. Ugh. Okay, some fresher solder. Hopefully our connector didn't move since it was just hanging up in there. And nice and easy. I have to have real steady hands for this because I'm holding both. I'm holding the flex cable and I'm holding the soldering iron. So this is insane. Come on, take the solder, take the solder, take the solder. Ugh, this this iron is not good at the tip. There's no solder at the tip. Ah, uh, let me clean it. We have the tip tenner. Hopefully that cleans up the tip. Get some solder to stick to the tip. What sort of temps am I using? Um, my equipment, including when I come into here, everything is always full and full. But this soldering iron tip is set to 840 degrees C. The, um, the hot air, the quick, is uh, set to, what, 450? 420 and 120 air, which is full air and almost full temp. I don't, I don't ever change my temperatures for things. It's very rarely that I'll, I'll dial temperature for anything. Oh god, this tip looks terrible. Come on, I just need you to make one joint to hold that. Ah, I moved it. You know what? I'm going to get a different tip because this thing is a little too worn out. One moment, please. Oh, I, kept, I could stay in the room. <laughs> I'm going to steal a student tip. Oh, no. The student tips don't look good either. Wait, there's one over here that hasn't been used. No, it's not here. Wait, yes, it is. Don't mind me, just running around the room. Okay, this tip looks perfect. Let's try this. Which one am I hooked up to? I'm hooked up to D. Move that. Plug in a new one. Okay, sorry for the intermission. Let's re reposition our, uh, our connector here. Knocked it out of position. good there. It's a little crooked. Uh, you know what? I'll fix it once I get one soldered in. If I get that one on this side soldered in, then I could adjust the other side. Uh, that's not a good focus, isn't it? Okay. Now, nice clean tip. Uh, I don't have any solder on it. Ugh. Okay, I moved it up a little bit too much. Come on. No. Gonna nulls it all up. Okay, all right, okay. Let's just take it off. There. Reposition. That looks good on that side. Now let's melt that one in there, and this should get a lot easier. There we go. That one is now connected. So now I can move this up. Let's solder another one. There we go. Okay, we got two soldered, so now it's going to be nice and solid in here. Get some new solder onto this. Let me zoom 
and some. Okay, now we can just go through and touch every one of these. Boy, none of these tips are doing good for me today. I should have brought mine for my desk. There we go. Okay, that side looks good. Now I'm going to turn the entire MacBook around to get the other side. Get some stuff out of the way. This whole cable can't be replaced because this is integrated to the touch bar. If it was the other connector, which is out of harm's way in a nice secure location, that one is replaceable because that's a separate cable. This one is integrated to the touch bar. There you go. Get a Q-tip, clean this up a little bit. So if you had the ability to replace the parts and you could get a replacement touch bar or the cable and be done with it, yes, we have touch bars. Uh, we can get replacement touch bars, but the touch bar is, um, a touch bar replacement I think is 275 for just the touch bar and it's, it's um, quite expensive or quite time consuming to change it. So it's easier to just solder on this connector than it is to change the touch bar. The touch bar is all glued into the case and the long piece of metal. This is just a connector. There you go. So if you ever run across this problem, if you're into um, repairing these, you also have to inspect this uh, connector a lot too. This one did get pushed up a little bit, but everything was able to get just pushed back in and it's solid enough that uh, I feel confident in leaving this connector on here. We don't, we don't need to change it because it, it, it did get pushed up a little bit on the top when, when everything got forced, but it didn't get broken like this one did. So now this connector will mate up perfectly in here. There you go. And that, that's, that's another thing too. Um, it, it's, sometimes it's very difficult to connect these connectors because they're, they're kind of hidden. A lot of them are hidden har um, farther underneath things than this. And you just place it on top in, in an orientation where you think it's about there and then just scrub it around a little bit and it will find its own center. So don't, don't try to force it in when, when like, you know, it, it's a little bit to the left and you're trying to push it in. Scrub it around a little bit and see it just fell right into place. So I'm, I'm moving it around, moving around, and there, it just fell right into place, and it doesn't want to move anymore. 
And now we can push it in and it clicks. And there you go, now it's connected. How bad is my queue at the moment? I think I have 18 things in my queue. And uh, a good amount of them are just absolute nightmares. I think some of them are just um, estimates, so. Don't have much more time this week. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's it's a public service announcement for anybody that wants to change their um, A1706 MacBook Pro screen at home. It's a great idea. You're going to save a ton of money if you don't mess anything up because screens are hard to get and ridiculously expensive right now. Um, Maybe someday they'll come back down to uh, non-sky-high prices. Uh, we used to be able to get the LCD cells and the, the whole assemblies for way less, like just magnitudes less than what they're at right now. So I hope you learned something. Um, if you need a screen and you're handy with a screwdriver, you know, don't be afraid to do it. Just make sure you pay attention to everything that's going on. Always remember that um, the logic board is meant to be housed inside of this thing where nothing touches it. It's not... Any logic board from any manufacturer is not hardened against people touching it or a tool dropping on it or a, a tweezer in the wrong space or your fingernail popping up a connector in the wrong way. They, they, don't, they don't think about trying to make a logic board hardened for that. Nobody would, because you're not, you're not supposed to see this. Nothing is supposed to contact this. So if you do have your machine open, be very conscious about that this thing is not supposed to be touched. You're not supposed to have your fingernails or a tool anywhere near this. So if you drop a tool on it, if you drop a, um, a, a screwdriver or a pair of tweezers somewhere, you will knock something off the board. And that one little something could keep the entire machine from turning on. There's plenty of things on here that I could just remove and the machine will never be bothered by it. But there's certain things, certain tiny, you know, small, as small as a piece of dust 201 resistor that I could pop off of here and this machine will never turn on again until you find that resistor and put it back on. So, always be very careful when you have your logic board open. So, hope you learned something. Have a good weekend. store.rossmangroup.com Is there a way to fix loose USB connectors on a 2012 MacBook Pro 13 so they don't disconnect so easily? Yeah, change them. Uh, you can desolder them, resolder them. That's it's not a... That's not too difficult. Um, you could always just try cleaning them. That might work. scroll through the chat a little bit before I go. I'm terrible at reading chat, sorry. <laughs> I don't know how Lewis does it. I have it in front of me, too. I don't even have it over there, and I still can't keep up with what I'm doing and reading chat. That Q-tip shows how tiny the connector is. Everything we work with, people don't realize uh, the size of the things that we work with. If I had a coin... Coins are usually some of the best things to show somebody how what the size relationship is. I don't have a coin laying around. I get I, I could I could pull a piece of hair and put put a piece of hair next to one of these things and you're like, oh my god, the, the a 201 resistor is the size of a piece of my beard hair. It's it's amazing that the, the size of things that we work with here. Tried to repair the home button of my iPhone. In the end, I destroyed my display in the front camera flex. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hate working on iPhones. Oh, show of hands. Uh, I got 148 people here. Show of hands in the chat. How many people would like to see um, one of our employees that fixes iPhones do some kind of iPhone fix? We'll find something cool, like maybe a TriStar repair or something like that. 
and, and we'll do a, 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 some iPhone fix uh, stream sometime. And put it down in the doobly doo. I do have clips that I could have used to hold this thing. I forgot to bring them in here. I'm guessing a place like this needs a storeroom filled of solder tips. Yes. We, the, the micro tips especially. These micro tips, um, something, something's going on. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it might be planned obsolescence. I don't know if you guys watched that. Um, it was a Veritasium about um, planned obsolescence and a light bulb. I'm wondering if the, the soldering iron tips are d trying to do the same thing to us because um, the micro tips do not last anything like they used to. Uh, when I first started working for Lewis, it was the first time I started using a Hacko station, and my micro tip lasted for months, if not if not a year or over a year. We are not getting six months out of these micro tips anymore, and the prices has skyrocketed too. Uh, the micro tip used to be maybe twenty five dollars or something like that. Any of the other micro tips are twenty five dollars. The the knife tip that we use is now forty three dollars or something like that. So they've doubled in price, and they've uh, halved the life that they'll last for. I don't know. It could be, it could be something innocuous like, um, oh, my God, they're buying these things like crazy, and uh, we ramped up our manufacturing, and now there's just errors in manufacturing, or they're just cutting corners to get tips out as fast as they can. I don't know. I'd like to see more life out of the microtips. The microtips are dying too fast. What parts would make the biggest difference for your pronounced dead cue if you can get them? <sighs> ISLs, um, ISL nine two four zero, which we can't, we are starting to be able to get, but they're kind of expensive. Uh, the CD thirty two seventeens we really need. Um, SMCs, the older SMCs now, like um, Air SMCs, double uh, one six five, or uh, even even uh, thirty one fifteen SMCs. Um, we're seeing people are still using these machines and they're still dying in the same way they used to, but it's getting harder and harder to find older parts. So it would be really cool if we can get um, the programming or get blank SMCs and the programmer and be able to program the older SMCs or just even be able to buy the older SMCs and reliable. $43 like a pack of 20? No, that's one single tip. I need to air blow my MacBook Pro 16 inch. Any tips? No, you don't need anything more than a pentalobe screwdriver. P4 or P5. Um, that I've noticed is a weird uh, discrepancy too. Um, I've always known it as a pentalobe 4. Where is it? There is no pentalobe screwdriver here. Oh well. I've always known it as a pentalobe 4, and that's what Weeha calls it. If you, if you were to buy the, this, this brand uh, screwdriver, Weeha, the, they call it a pentalobe 4 for the MacBooks. Um, I've seen the standard, and Weeha seems to be going a little bit against the standard, which is weird. So anybody else that you buy, you buy a wow stick, or you buy um, just any other tip, any other screwdriver for a pentalobe, the pentalobe 5 is what opens the MacBook back. But the Weeha, it's the Pentalobe 4 that opens the MacBook back. Which is kind of confusing, kind of weird, and one of those weird quirks that, like, would frustrate somebody that's just, just getting started, and they buy a nice set of Weeha screwdrivers, and they know they only need one Pentalobe, so they only buy the 5, and then it doesn't work, and I would be mad. But, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know why that's doing that. But, yeah, all you need is the um, Pentalobe. Take the bottom off. The bottom's a pain in the ass to get off. You gotta, you gotta pop off the. Um, first, you gotta pop off this way, and you gotta pull it out away from the machine. Um, I've, I've done, uh, I've done one video before. I have one video on my channel that uh, the audio was absolutely horrendous on, and then um, I've did, I've done a video on Lewis's channel. It ended in me doing a dead bug. So um, what it is is you, you take out the screws and then you have to lift from, from this side. So this, this is where the machine opens up here on this side. This is where the machine opens. This is the back where the vents are and the hinges are. You take the screws out. You pop it off here. So you're going to have really hard um, restriction against you pulling it off here. All it does is just pop out. And then there's uh, two lighter ones in here. So you'll, you'll get four pops, or, or this usually pops that too, because that's so difficult to pull up. 
So you get that up, and it's going to be hinging on these clips that are clipped in here. There's these things that slide in here. So you get it up, and then you have to pull it up that way. So when you're pulling it up, don't put a screwdriver in here to try to pull this up. Because these little chips right here always get broken off by people that put screwdrivers in. Never use a screwdriver inside of here. Use a plastic tool. Use something that doesn't have any reach. You don't want to nick your battery. You don't want to nick your logic board. And the, the back cover is not going to break. It's not going to bend. You get your fingernails underneath here. That's all I ever use is get a couple fingernails underneath here and pull up on it. And usually do one side at a time. You pull up over here, and this will pop, and then that will pop, and then that will pop, and then you can pop this. So then, then, then you have to pull it forward, and that's always you always lose some knuckle skin the first couple times that you do it because this is kind of sharp up here, and you have your fingers in here, and you're pulling on it, and you're trying to push back down that way on this, and you're trying to pull on this, and it, it's it's a total nightmare. But it's a it's a weird thing that you can get used to and get the thing open. Sushi from Christopher Kelly. Very oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you for Christopher Kelly. We have uh, we have sushi here. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, pop the co cover off. You're gonna find a bunch of uh, um, dust in your fan. Disconnect the battery. First thing you want to do is disconnect the battery because you don't want any shocks, any static going around. You're going to have a, th this thing over top of it. Th this plastic thing is going to be over top of your um, your battery connector. This this is a completely different machine. Yours is going to look similar to this. This is it's still the same kind of layout. So you're going to have this little thing here. Uh, use a plastic tool or your fingernail. You lift the little locking bar on this and then just pull the. Um, the cable straight back. This is just double-sided tape thingies that hold this on there, so you could pull that right off if you wanted to. You don't have to. You could just pull it up from one side. There are dead fish in the store. Do you like? There's some right there. Hi hi. A wild hi hi has appeared. I don't know what you're talking about. The wild hi hi is running out the room. So yeah, uh, you, you're going to find a bunch of dust in here. You're going to have dust in here in the heat sink. Um, you want to get um, one of those acid brushes or a very uh, light bristle toothbrush and just scrub in here a little bit and then blow it out and then try to get in here with something and blow it out. And then here in the vents too. This is where the air comes into the machine here and a little bit in here. Well, no, they, they don't even really do much in here anymore. Everything's coming in from the sides. The older machines all came in from the bottom middle too. So the sides are going to be all built up with dust. Your fans are going to be all built up with dust. The, the heat sink is all built up with dust. So yeah, just take the canned air. Don't, don't get the fan spinning too much because a, a fan, remember a motor is, if you spin the motor, it turns into a generator. So if you're here, you know, listening to the and, and having it spin real fast, you can accidentally put some electricity back into the motherboard on that circuit. It should protect itself, might not anything happen, but you don't want to take the chance. Just don't, don't get the fan spinning so hard with the, the compressed air going in there. This information can save you a lot of money. A lot of money and a lot of time. Just changing your own screen can save you a lot of time and money. Just make sure you're careful. Have a good weekend, everybody. If you're interested in doing the type of work that we do in this video, repairing motherboards at component level, and you'd like to learn more for free, I'd highly suggest that you check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Rossman Group. When you visit the channel, you can click on Playlists, scroll down, and you'll see a playlist called MacBook Component Level Logic Board Repairs. On this playlist, you'll find over 600 videos detailing how to fix MacBook motherboards. If you feel like the content in these videos is a little bit too advanced for you, or like you need to learn a little bit more electronics theory before you're able to understand what we're going over, you can scroll down in the video description and click on the beginner's guide. When you click on the beginner's guide, you'll see this 150 slide guide that goes over everything from short detection to how transistors work, to how data lines work, to how buck converters work, so that you can better understand how to do these types of repairs. If you would like more free help, you can visit repair.wiki. On repair.wiki, we have all of the devices listed by model and board number, along with common solutions and common problems so that you can get an idea of where to look for your particular problem. If you're unsure how to fix it and you just want to pay somebody else to fix it, look no further than rossmangroup.com. On rossmangroup.com, you can find repair services 
as well as mail-in repair services where you can mail in your repair from anywhere and we'll take care of it for you. If you'd like some paid help with your board repair but you'd still like to do it yourself, you can check out boards.rossmangroup.com where we have expert level technicians that will answer your questions for the low, low price of $29 a month. If you'd like to learn how to do this in an in-person classroom environment, look no further than rossmangroup.com where you can go here, scroll down, Click Learn Logic Board Repair and sign up for a paid class to learn how to fix motherboards and learn in person how to do the work that we do here on this channel. We have paid resources available and we also have free resources available for those who'd like to learn who don't have a budget to be able to pay for an in-person class. Lastly, if you'd like to purchase any of the tools that we used on, in this video, you can check the video description and you will see all of the tools that we use from microscopes to freeze spray to soldering stations to soldering tips and so on and so forth. And you can visit store.rossmangroup.com to, to purchase some tools to purchase tools like the At and Hot Air Rework Station. And you can visit places like store.rossmangroup.com to purchase some of the tools we use, like the Atten 862 Hot Air Rework Station. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.